Our second scripture reading is from the book of Genesis. We'll be reading chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. You can find it on page 2 of the red Bibles in front of you if you'd like to read along. Genesis 2, 2 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all of the work he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all of the work that he had done in creation. Gracious God, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts that are open to receive and respond to your word, your message to us this day. Amen. Well, I first want to say a special note of gratitude to the Rabbi David for being here last Sunday. If you were not here, I highly encourage that you take time to watch the service, which is recorded on our website and the archives page. His presence, his words of inspiration about the Shabbat, the Sabbath, and what it means to him and his faith and his family, uh, and his musical talent as he led us in a couple of really wonderful songs, was so inspiring and a great way to begin this September sermon series about the Sabbath, the gift of the Sabbath, and how it is life-giving and freeing. So please take time to watch that service. The Atlantic writer Derek Thompson coined the term workism in 2019. Workism. And he diagnosed himself as a worker under its grasp. He writes, the economists of the early 20th century did not foresee that work might evolve from a means of material production to a means of identity production. He writes, especially for the college-educated and elite, its work would morph into a kind of religion, promising identity, transcendence, and community. But of course, as he writes, and as we have all experienced, workism does not deliver on any of those promises in trying to find identity or community, or even a sense of transcendence. It fails to deliver, and in fact, can steer us off the rails for those. Thompson notes, our jobs were never meant to shoulder the burdens that we carry, the burdens of a faith, and they are buckling under the weight. For those who have come to view work as the guiding principle of life, other priorities can quickly fall by the wayside. The underlying challenge for many is that their lives are stretched like a rubber band about to snap. And if you've ever had one of those rubber bands and you pull it, it's kind of scary when it snaps. You don't want it to snap. But many people are feeling that. And partly because of our priorities of work and how we have viewed work. So in this relentless busyness of modern life, I believe that we have lost the rhythm between work and rest. Because work is important. Work is a gift from God, which we should celebrate and honor. But so too is rest. All life requires this rhythm of rest. We know it, we see it, we experience it, maybe without thinking about it. There's a rhythm of waking and sleeping. We know how important that is. And generally, we sleep at night and we arise in the morning. There's this rhythm. There's a rhythm to the way that the day dissolves into the night and then night into the morning. It happens every day. Different times, of course, during different seasons. And some are more dramatic, but there is a rhythm to that. There's a rhythm to the tidal. Tides have this rhythm. If you've spent time, let's say, on the coast anywhere over the summer, we spent some time in Maine, and some areas of Maine have these tides that vary up to 
24 feet, I think. I mean, it's massive tidal change, but there's this rhythm. One author writes this. There's a, a deep, eternal conversation between the land and the great sea. And they're having that conversation every day. Back and forth, this rhythm. And of course, as we get out into nature, we know this rhythm as the active growth of spring and summer. And then it's quieted by the necessary dormancy of fall into winter. And especially in Vermont, we get to enjoy the beauty of the seasons in their vast array. And we experience this annual rhythm within the fabric of nature. But in modern life, especially in the Western world, we, we have lost this essential rhythm. And in its place, we've accepted a substitute of busyness. Have you ever said this phrase, I am so busy? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but I would imagine you have said this, right? And sadly, often, we actually say this at times with pride, as if our exhaustion were a trophy, our ability to withstand stress as a mark of real character. Oh, I am just so busy. I am so busy. Oh, I'm too busy. Brother David Stendel Rast, this wonderful Catholic brother and writer, reminds us in this, this book that the Chinese picograph, right? So this picograph, if you know Chinese, for busy, the word busy, right? There's symbols. It's composed of two characters, heart and killing. Think about that. Heart and killing, when those two characters are combined, it forms the word busy in Chinese. I think they're on to something. <laughs> they get it. And we should too. The busier we are, of course, the more important we seem to ourselves. And we imagine the more important we seem to others. But to what cost? to be unavailable to our friends and family, to be unable to find time for the sunset, to ply through obligations without time for a mindful breath. This, sadly, has become the model of a successful life. Now, I know many of us have intentionally tried to move away from that and move to Vermont, right? We get it. That's why we're here. But let me just offer something that some of that can carry with you here as well. If we are not more intentional, more focused, more purposeful in setting aside time and in doing what God not just suggests but actually commands is to honor and to keep the Sabbath. It's so important for us. Rabbi Levi saw a man running in the street and asked him, Why do you run so fast? Well, he replied, I'm running after my good fortune. Rabbi Le Levi tells him, Silly man, your good fortune has been trying to chase you, but you are running too fast. And as Gandhi once said, There is more to life than merely increasing its speed. We need to slow down. We need to pause. We need to breathe. The reality is we need the Sabbath. Just like creation around us needs it and enters into this rhythm, we were created to need this. We can only function at our best when we have the Sabbath. Rest is an essential enzyme of life, as necessary as air. Without rest, we cannot sustain the energy we need to have life, to make life, to live life abundantly. And throughout our scriptures, our shared stories within Judaism and Christianity, some of the main leading characters made sure that they found time for rest. When Moses became weary, leading his people through their trials in the desert, 
God told him, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. When we think of Jesus, we usually think of him teaching, healing, traveling, being around masses of people. And he did. That was part of his calling. But Jesus, as often as he did all of those, we read in scriptures, Jesus set aside time. He would send people away. Picture this, people who had needs, real needs, and they were never ending. Jesus would at times send them away so that he could go off, and sometimes with his disciples, to find a quiet place and time to rest, to breathe, to pray. If Jesus took time off, time away, to disconnect, to unplug, to be alone, I think it's okay for us to do that as well. Jesus invited people and his followers to join with him in the middle of their busyness. Even if they had no leisure time, he still invited them to take time to pause and to enter into God's presence and receive God's promised Sabbath rest. When we take time to rest and are intentional with the Sabbath, we then become more present and more available to those who we love. We are more mindful to be with our children, to spend time with them in these precious years that fly by. And sometimes what we need to do is to take a day, a week, to say, I'm not going to do anything else. We're going to be together. We're going to do things that bring us joy and delight. We'll talk more about what those could look like in the weeks ahead, but I think the important thing today is that we make time, set aside time for this, to honor the Sabbath, to rest as a family, to rest as an individual, to stop doing something, not necessarily so you can start doing something else, but just stop. Make more time to do nothing. And when was the last time you did nothing? Even on vacation, we feel the need to just fill up the days with stuff, activities. At least I do. Maybe not you, but vacation could just... Imagine, you know, and you ask people, where did you go on vacation? What did you do? What you want to hear is, oh, this is where we did this. We went here, we went here, we went here. What about if someone said, I did nothing over the summer? It was awesome. And it probably would be awesome. How many of you have come back from vacation exhausted? <laughs> right? That seems to defeat the purposes. I get it. You make great memories, and, and we do it too. But think about that. You come back from vacation, and you are exhausted. God knows it's not sustainable. Right? These, these weeks are not sustainable. If you, don't take a, if you don't take time and set aside one day, just one day, even a portion of that day, you know, I love how the rabbi says that on, Saturday, on Friday nights, they begin their Shabbat. They'll light a candle. They'll gather together for a worship service, similar to this, um, and or at people's homes. And that starts their time of, of rest. And then for 25 hours, right, they won't do anything. There's no work. And they said it's the best day of the week, hands down. And it could be for us as well. Our Sabbath, maybe it is Sunday. Look, it's in the morning. We light candles, we gather for worship, we're inspired, go out and rest. Recreate, bring things that, do things that bring joy. And again, we'll talk more about that in the weeks ahead. But the first thing is taking a time, setting aside time, and stop from working. There's a great story about a young Jewish couple who got married, and the bride's grandparents gave them a brand new washer and dryer. It was a very generous gift. And they were grateful to receive such a blessing for their new home. But when presented with the gift to the the newlyweds, the grandfather explains, now I need you to know something, he says, this uh, this is a Jewish washer and dryer. Well, what makes them Jewish, asked the husband. The grandfather replied with a twinkle, they will not work on Shabbat. Something to that. 
So what I want to do each of these next three Sundays is to offer one suggestion or a Sabbath recommendation that we can try the week ahead. And we can try to maybe practice them in our lives. And if we build on some of these, find what works for you, find what brings you joy, what's actually helpful. And my hope is that over a series of this whole month and into the year ahead, that we can, in our own way, each of us make one step forward, one more effort to honoring and keeping the Sabbath in our lives. So here's the one for this week. And this one goes without saying, on the Sabbath, don't work, right? Like, just pause. Everything can get done. It will get done the next day. Just stop. But let's go specific. And I kind of like this from the story. Choose one heavily used appliance and or device. Laptop, cell phone, dishwasher, maybe washing machine. Heavily used appliance and let them rest for a day. Because if you let them rest, I have a feeling that you will be able to rest a bit more. And that would be a gift. In just a few moments, we're going to be coming to the table, the communion table. And I think in our society, when we are often stressed and anxious and exhausted, this is a gift as well, where we are reminded about God's gift of the Sabbath. Jesus said to his disciples, and Jesus says to us, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And so in just a few moments, each one of us will have an opportunity to come to the table, to come to Jesus, and to receive rest for our souls. Thank you, God, for the gift of Sabbath.